Welcome to Howard's Flippin' History. Today we're going to talk about the Republic of Texas, uh, Sam Houston's first administration. 1836, when Texas won its independence, you will see we were a much larger country than we are a state today. You will see outlined in white the boundaries of what is presently Texas as compared with the yellow area, which is the Republic of Texas. Much, much larger. In addition, since we had both a public and a secret treaty, there was still some dispute over whether we had won our independence and also what the boundary between Texas and Mexico would be. Even though there was some uncertainty to our new nation, we still formed a government, with Sam Houston being elected the President of the Republic of Texas, Mirabu B. Lamar Vice President, and we adopted the Constitution of 1836. Now, the Constitution of 1836 guaranteed certain things to us. One was that we would have a bicameral legislature. That means two houses of Congress, a legislative branch that had both a House of Representatives and a Senate. Sam Houston became the first head of the executive branch of the Republic of Texas in 1836. And while he has many friends who honor him as the hero of San Jacinto, he also has enemies or people who would like to take him down. Among these are David Burnett, Mirabu B. Lamar, who don't quite agree with Sam Houston's policies. They think he's a little bit too showy. Now, what are the problems that Sam Houston is going to have to face? Well, we have a Mexico that still will not admit that they lost the war. We also have a government that's deeply in debt. We need to persuade other nations, foreign countries in Europe, such as France, that we are indeed an independent country. And the Indians who took advantage of the Texas Revolution have actually regained some of the land that they had initially lost to Anglo settlers. And so we have a native American problem on our hands. How can Houston solve these problems? Well, he's a very cautious leader. He doesn't believe in big government or a lot of spending. Instead, he decides that we must prevent war with Mexico or the native of Texans, and he appoints a cabinet to help advise him. Among these are Stephen F. Austin, who will serve as the first Secretary of State. Now, you might ask yourself, where is the father of Texas? Why was he not elected our first president? Actually, Stephen F. Austin did run against Sam Houston. However, he was defeated because you will have to remember that some people had lost respect for Stephen F. Austin during the early days of the revolution because he had actually advised that we negotiate with Mexico and remain loyal to them. It wasn't until he was arrested and imprisoned in Mexico that he changed his mind. Now, Stephen F. Austin is a bit embarrassed to win, or not win election, I should say, and so he ends up taking the Secretary of State position, and he serves for three months. He then passes away of pneumonia. Some people believe he died as, of a broken heart, having given most of his life's work to the creation of the Republic of Texas. He felt somehow dishonored by not being chosen the first president. Regardless, it's hard to say, but we do know today that the present-day capital is named for him. Now, after the Texas Revolution, the capital of Texas was Columbia. Two brothers, however, donated land, and we built a new capital near what is Harrisburg, which, if you remember the Battle of San Jacinto, was near the battle site. And this capital is named for Sam Houston. Now, it's still there today, and it's actually the largest city in Texas. Why did it not remain our capital? Well, many reasons. It wasn't centrally located, it was muddy, it was hot, and there were mosquitoes that carried malaria. Now, at the same time that we're building a brand new capital called Houston in the Republic of Texas, we have our first attempt at annexation to the United States. However, the U.S. is a bit wary to annex Texas, largely because Texas would be admitted to the Union as a slave state, and this would upset the balance between slave and free states in the United States and could possibly lead to civil war. 
While the decision was delayed again and again, Houston decides that rather than be embarrassed over it taking so long for them to decide on annexation, that he will withdraw his request and we will remain our own independent republic until the United States is able to annex us of their own free will. Now, because we are an independent republic and we are deeply in debt, one of the biggest problems is the lack of money. So Sam Houston begins his presidency in a position that he doesn't exactly appreciate with a debt of over $1 million and then money. Houston held government expenses to a minimum and tried to raise revenue only for items that were absolutely necessary. Remember, revenue is the annual or current income of the government, and usually you raise revenue by taxation. Houston did not want to tax the people of Texas, who had lost so much during the Texas Revolution, and instead he decides to issue promissory notes. Uh, about $600,000 worth of promissory notes. They are called today star money because there was a large star in the front of these bills. These notes basically were a promise that the government would pay the specified amount to the holder of the note at a future date with interest. Now, promissory notes um, were one way to raise money. However, many people were wary to buy the promissory notes because they didn't really see Texas being able to work its way out of debt. And so they were not terribly popular and they didn't go over very well. When Texas's financial situation did not improve, some feared that the promise of future payment not, might not be kept, and therefore they started refusing to accept these promissory notes or IOUs. They wanted something that actually had value. Tension between Texas and Mexico still existed. You will recall there was a public and a secret treaty of Alaska. And both Santa Ana agreed to the independence of Texas. But Mexico, because it feared that their leader, Santa Ana, had been coerced into surrendering, didn't accept either treaty. Also, Houston has trouble in the army at this time. Uh, another Houston, by the name of Felix Houston, no relation, had raised an army of 500 to 700 volunteers to fight in the Texas Revolution. However, when Houston's army made it to Texas, Felix Houston found that the war was over. He wanted to continue going on fighting, and so he had stirred up unrest into, in the Texas army. Sam Houston was very irritated with Felix Houston because Felix Houston was actually talking about renewing the war with Mexico and invading Mexico himself. Houston had, in addition, problems with the Native Americans. However, unlike most leaders of his time, Houston was sympathetic towards the plight of Native Texans. Remember, Houston had lived with the Cherokee in Tennessee, and he understood that the Native Americans often made treaties with whites, but then lost their lands because those treaties were not enforced by the current government. Houston did realize that Anglo settlers wanted native Texan land, and he tried as best he could to keep both sides at peace with each other. And the Texas Rangers were used at this time to patrol the frontier and to try to keep the party safe. Now, Houston finds himself in 1838 unable to run for re-election because the Texas Constitution prohibited back-to-back -back terms. And so since each president was elected for two years. This meant that now someone else would be elected, and that man is Mirabubi Lamar. 